Hello guys, welcome to Web Scraping Kung Fu series and today we're going to learn how to scrape data from HTML table. So let's go to the chamber number 5 and here we see the table wrapped by the jQuery plugin called data tables but still if we look at the page source we will see the regular HTML table that contains all the data we need. So let's actually start writing some code. First we need to import a couple of libraries. So we need, we'll need the requests to make HTTP GET requests from BS4 import beautiful soup. To parse the content we also need to import the CSV module to uh, write the CSV file. And now I'll create a class called table scraper and define a few methods here. So first would be called def fetch that would take the URL as the parameter and it would actually return requests get and the URL itself. Then the parse def parse would take the HTML response. Let's print it for now. HTML then def to CSV would actually be used to write the CSV file uh, to write the results to the CSV file and def run would be needed to start the scraper. Okay, so uh, now let's create the class driver here. So I say if name is equal to main. In this case, we want to create the scraper instance. I say scraper is equal table scraper and scraper dot run. So now we need to create the response uh, variable that would be storing the response from the HTTP GET request. So I say simply self.fetch and here we need to provide the URL to the particular endpoint that we're supposed to scrape data from. So I say this one. Okay and Actually, we hope to see the HTML response in return here. So, uh, not the request, but requests in plural. Okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't call the parse function here. So, self parse, and we need to pass the response dot text the parse function, the pure HTML response in the string format. And here we get it basically. So now let's actually create the content variable that was that would store the parsed version of the entire content. So I call the beautiful soup function to parse the content, pass the HTML variable as the first argument and Alex specify the AlexML parser as the second uh, as the second argument first and the second argument and now we need to extract the table which would be equal to content dot find in this case I'm using the find function instead of final because we have only the only table uh, on the web page so uh, let's specify the ta the tag name so this is table let's quickly print the table to screen to make sure that we have extracted that correctly so here is our table and now we need uh, now we need actually to extract all the table rows so I say rows is equal table dot find all and the tr tags which stands for table rows so let's have a look at the rows okay so here we have all the rows and now in order to extract 
the hitters of the table, uh, by saying this, I mean the column names here. So this is the very first row of the table that contains tags that are called TH, which stands for table hitter. And this one will, co will contain the TD tags that represents ta table data, yeah, table data. So if I just print the rows, uh, rows very first element, remember that final function returns the Python list, so we can uh, uh, reference the corresponding indexes here. So here we're actually supposed to see our column names. So that's where we're supposed to extract the column, column names from. And oh, actually it's time to create the results uh, list that would store the entire results. And here what we want to do is it, as I just say self.results Results.append, and we want to use the list comprehension here to return to the list of the pure column names instead of column names wrapped with a text. So I say just uh, header dot text for header in rows the first element dot find all th like this and let's actually print the self dot results here okay so now we have uh, our results list and the very first kind of element of the result of the entire results list contains uh, this list of titles and then we would be appending uh, a row by row uh, all the uh, table data decks or TD tags. So now uh, what we what we need to do now actually is we need to loop over the table rows. So I say for row in in rows like this. And here we want self dot results uh, dot append. And again, I'm using the list comprehension here, but uh, now instead of here, I say just data dot text for data in row dot find all. And this time this would be the tab table data tag. So let's actually uh, check that out. So for one in Results print one. So I just want to quickly check that out if the results has been appended to the table correctly. Well, it seems like they are. Okay, so this is it basically. And now uh, it's time to store our results to the CSV file. So there it would be kind of more more clearly uh, rep the data would be more clearly represented within the H within the CSV file. So it would be easier to see what we actually got as as the result. So now call cell dot to CSV and here we need to create a file stream to write the output. So with open table dot CSV we use uh, we want to open the stream to write uh, the content as CSV file here. Now we need to create the writer which is equal CSV dot uh, writer and pass the CSV file stream as an argument and now the, the very last uh, thing uh, left here is very simple. We need just to call writer dot write rows and pass the self dot results as an argument. Well, and I hold my breath and actually run this, and I hope to see the tables dot csv as the output here. So let's actually. Okay. Oh, this 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 was left from my test. Okay, guys. So, so let let me just delete this. Okay. So let me just delete this to make sure 
that it works really. Okay. And the only problem left is we have this uh, this empty space here. Well, that's because the very first row is skipped uh, because it doesn't have have the table data tags, but the table header tags instead. So this one's basically. So we want to to add a little condition here. Uh, so in row find all td, and we say if row find all td. I'm not sure is not none or or is not equal to empty string. Not not sure what would be the proper way of yes probably. this would be the right way okay okay hold on a second guys just let me find out okay it's not empty it's not equal to empty list basically so let's run this one more time and still doesn't work hmm okay probably uh, use the land function here so I say if land of the corresponding uh, yes, of the corresponding row is not equal to zero so to zero like this so probably this would work oh my god it still doesn't Are you kidding me man uh, okay so Let's actually put this condition over here. Okay, this time we we get exactly the response we're supposed to get. So let's view the output in the LibreOffice. Okay, so here is our table that has been parsed with the CSV file here. So, well guys, this is it for this video. I hope you've learned something interesting from this. So, until the next time, and take care.